Hello, everyone. Welcome to Experts on Call. Today, I have Sarah Tetlow, owner of Firm Focus. Sarah is a productivity coach who specializes in attorneys and legal professionals. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Judy. It's lovely to be here. Always great to see you. Attorneys and legal professionals, boy, what are you seeing for them during shelter in place and working from home right now? What's on the horizon? So it's definitely an interesting time for them. Um, attorneys, as many people know, have billable hour requirements that their firm establishes. And some of my clients that I've talked to, um, the consensus is the firms have not adjusted the billable hour requirement or they just haven't communicated it. And so the assumption is that they still need to meet whatever the demands are of um, the firm to, to hit those billable hours. Ooh. And yeah, it's it's certainly tough. And some attorneys that I'm talking to are just doing the best that they can, investing as many hours as they possibly can to get client work done and certainly meeting deadlines, but are just kind of hoping and praying that the firm will uh, forgive a little bit of this time and adjust the billable hours accordingly for 2020 and um, this fiscal year. And other attorneys that I'm talking to have said that they have not adjusted the billable hour and I've directly asked, is this, have they communicated that to you or is this kind of your assumption? And no, they're communicating to us that the expectations are we're hitting seven to eight hours a day. And in that case, especially when they're parents, they're starting to really sacrifice other, the areas of their life such as self-care and sleep because that's the only space in 24 hours that they can carve off time. They, wow. they can't carve off the billable hour and work. They can't carve off the kids needs. And so um, by default, they're, they're really losing out on some sleep. And if, with parents who have kids um, in school, when do the parents help the kids with school, especially with kids you know, in elementary school, right? <sighs> Yeah, and um, I, I mean, I have small kids, and fortunately, my son's homework assignment, he's first grade, um, I can kind of fit it in wherever I need to, um, but I do have one client that says that her son has four hours a day, he's a, he's a fifth grader, oh, wow. and he also um, needs a little bit more attention to do the work, he's not the kind of child that will sit and do it, so she is homeschooling for four hours and really not starting her day as an attorney until after lunchtime, which is, and then it's, she stops for dinner and then picks back up after bedtime. And that's right. translating into the really late nights. Really late nights, whoa. What are your recommendations for folks in, in that kind of situation? That's, that sounds not sustainable. Yeah, it, it isn't sustainable. And I think it, for one, it's really a big indicator of the kind of firm that you're working for and whether or not they can be a little bit nimble in the time. And maybe the, maybe the um, request is try your best to meet your billable hours, but take care of your needs as well. And um, some days it may mean that you can meet and exceed those hours. And other days we understand that it might be a little bit more challenging get the work done, get it done on time. And, um, but we can understand that it may not translate to as much invested as when you were able to sit at your desk and mm -hmm. mitigate some of those distractions that you're having at home. So with your clients, how are you helping them manage? Um, I'll, I'll be candid that in the, in the one extreme I gave, that is really hard to manage. And um, I just gave her tips that if it's possible to do some of the more shallow work while she's homeschooling. So he's working on a problem and she's maybe managing emails so that when she sits down at 1230, she can immediately dive into the billable deep work and get it done for five hours straight. Um, I'm recommending using techniques like the Pomodoro to stay very focused and stay on track asking and communicating with other family members to give, to give you that time. So when she does go to work at one, in her case, um, that her partner is 
now on with the children. And so she can really focus for the next five hours. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, if she's able to get four to five hours of billable work done, then she will not find that she is staying up quite as late because right now she's up till two or three in the morning. I think she can find the time throughout the day. Um, in general, with my, with my other clients that aren't seeing um, quite the strict requirements on them right now, um, I am recommending that when they're trying to balance with a spouse or partner with two working parents, my recommendation is to work two hours um, in two hour blocks uh, or four, four Pomodoros if we want to use that same language. And what I mean by that is parent A takes mm. a two hour chunk of time where they are in full work mode uninterrupted mm. and the other parent is still working but maybe they're doing their more shallow work while also managing the children and then swap and by setting up something like two hour increments it um that's just enough time that the parent who is in deep work can get significant progress done on some projects while parent b is starting to get a little stir crazy at about that two hour mark that they now want their time uninterrupted. So um, that seems to be working the two hour golden rule of parent swapping, if that's something that you guys can manage in, in your day. Got it, got it, great, thank you. And how do you help folks with this? Do you um, do group coaching classes? What, what does working with you look like? So yeah, I do um, up to five in a cohort and as long as there's some commonality. So usually it's same firm, same team or same um, level, like all associates or all paralegals. Um, my reasoning for that is I think that um, the coaching I do with the attorneys or the team or legal professionals is sort of customized in educating me on the culture of the firm so that I know what variables we're working with in order to help them with their productivity. Uh, I also do one-on-one, -on -one, which is very customized to the individual. And, um, and then I do a lot of workshops or speaking engagements as well. Mm -hmm. And it's so valuable that you have a legal background to be able to empathize with uh, legal professionals. That's very valuable that they can speak to you about their challenges or their issues and you can totally understand what they're talking about. Exactly. That's, that is why I picked working with attorneys um, and legal professionals is that I understand the terminology. I understand the pressure. I understand um, what you're needing to manage on, on sort of the day to day and leading up to trials and hearings and depositions and um, motions that come through unexpectedly and decisions that, the judges um, make that maybe weren't quite what you were expecting and that can really change the whole strategy of your case going forward and create more work so mm -hmm. or sometimes it's even settlement they you settle a case you weren't expecting to settle and all of a sudden you've got some time that's opened up and not really sure how to manage yeah. when time has opened up is oh, another right. situation so got it and can you tell us a, a success story with some good news with client success story recently? A uh, client success story recently, um, one that just really uh, kind of pulled at my heartstrings a little bit. Um, someone who was just under so much stress and uh, it was actually when we first started working together and I encouraged him. I could just see that there was so much going on in his head and um, I encouraged him to just stop and start writing things down. And 10 minutes later, it took him 10 minutes to just jot some words down. And at the end of that 10 minutes, I, I could see some of the stress melt away. And this is a technique I, I do a lot with my clients. A brain dump is something that we kind of work off of as the foundational per, uh, period. But in, in his case, I asked him when he was done the last time he had done something like that. And he had said, never. It was just not a practice that he does. And that really um, resonated with me because it's such a, a big piece of how I operate. I, I mean, I try to keep this clean, as clear as possible and write things down and then 
set up tickler systems to handle things. Um, so it just gave us a lot of groundwork to move forward with. And um, as we're working together, we're seeing some success in that. Wow, that's so valuable, a brain dump for sure. Uh, yeah, downloading everything in our brain so that we don't use our brains as a file cabinet. Right. It's not what it was meant for. Great. Right. And if folks want to reach out to you, how would you like them to do that? I uh, LinkedIn is one way. Uh, okay. Sarah Tetlow on LinkedIn and um, Sarah S A R A H at firm dash focus dot com. Dash focus dot com. Okay, here are my notes from our chat today. Mm -hmm. Two hour blocks, swap, and then a brain dump, and then Sarah's contact info. Love it. Yeah, thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing your expertise. The legal profession needs you so much. <laughs> thank you, I agree. <laughs> Fantastic, thanks so much. Thanks, Judy, love it. <laughs>